When Sonic 1 got released back in June of 1991, the Hedgehog became so popular, everyone was eager to see what the successor would bring, resulting in a lot of leaks, prototypes getting stolen, and to this day, so, so many unfinished ROMs for Sonic 2 and onwards. But for his very first game, not being well known at the time, no early builds have been found. That was until recently, out of nowhere, someone who goes by the name of Buckaroo proved he had the very thing we'd been searching for, and dumped the ROM for everyone to experience. Well, here we go. I have my Everdrives at the ready, and I have flashed it onto this cart too, because we'll also be testing the compatibility with Sonic & Knuckles. Since the announcement of this gem, your comments have been flying in. And I know what you lot are thinking. It's a prototype of the original game, of course it will work on real hardware. So, about that. Sonic Crackers would like a word with you. Secondly, Sonic Chaos Point 20 for the SMS would also like to argue your point. However, I'm derailing. For my main test, I used my Genesis Model 1 with the Mega EverDrive Pro. Well, it boots up. That's clear with the louder drum samples being used in the music. Noticing a lot of small changes, it's this rolling ball that has grabbed everyone's curiosity. I guess we have to deliver it to Eggman ourselves. I had one weird glitch where I landed on spikes and I was unable to collect my scattered rings. Also, my invulnerability lasted a staggering 10 seconds. I was never able to pull this off again though. I got to the end of Green Hill Zone and jumped for joy, seeing that Marvel's graphics are a bit too quick off the mark to load. Nothing to cause concern about, but interesting nonetheless. So, aliens are here to take over, or this stupid spike enemy has. Marvel is just a death trap, and while Act 1 remains mostly the same, it does show off this side skewer in use. Act 2 has some subtle differences, but what's fascinating is that this area has been extended. Or shall I say it got reduced in the final. That's probably for the best. Act 3 also has a diverse ending, and if you're not careful, you can accidentally lock the screen, due to being too close to the end of the stage. If you manoeuvre Sonic carefully, you can bypass this and continue to follow the path only for the same stop to be presented shortly afterwards, and it's impossible to sneak by. The boss is missing, and Sparkling Zone's graphics initiate too quickly. Wait, Sparkling Zone? No! The famous City Nightlight stage as seen in the articles? Too right! While it's breathtaking to finally experience this for myself, I'm thankful that it was converted into Spring Yard. So, except for these rotating spikes on this bumper, and the plethora of spike badniks in random places, the level and object layout is near the same as the retail game. Act 1 is complete, and uh, oh, oh, okay, straight into Starlight, fair enough. And this is where we start to recognise the unrecognisable. It's apparent that Starlight was previously aiming for another layout style. It could have been in the middle of a change because only basic objects such as springs and platforms can be found. And after spinning the sunken signpost, we're at an end. So far so good for the Sonic 1 prototype. No major issues playing on a real Genesis. But we can unlock more content with level select and debug options. Pressing A plus start at the title screen, you can then enter debug mode by holding A on the act of your choice. Sparkling 2 only has half the objects implemented, and then it wears out, whereas Act 3 is completely absent of any socialisation. Labyrinth is totally empty, but Act 1 shows off an old background which I'm in love with. I much prefer it over the final, and apart from this cool dome area, there's nothing else to see here. I entered into other acts in Starlight Zone, which again have entirely altered layouts and minimal objects, but the one that caught my eye was this garbled block in Act 2. It acts as a lowering stand, but is it glitched due to running on a real machine? Well, Kager, the most forgiven emulator, also shows a corrupted mess, as well as the regen emulator. So no, the system is not at fault here. 
Last of the ordinary levels is Clock Orc, remarked for its missing W tile. This stage is just a total mess and uses a chunk from Act 2 as the background. Nearly the whole map differs from the finished game, but there's nothing to write home about here. Then finally, the special stage. No emeralds are in sight and the up and down blocks reverse the current rotation. You can only jump using the C button, which is my preferred button anyway, and A and B increases the speed left and right respectively. There are some red circles towards the end, and colliding into them spins the stage rapidly, then halts to take a moment to think, followed by teleporting you back to the start. I tried out debug in every stage, and there are one or two cool things to observe albeit it near functions the same way as we expect. Otherwise, no serious bugs were encountered, except for in sound test. Do yourself a favour, don't play sound test number 92. It's an invalid pointer and it will crash the game. And on the rare occasion, resetting the game will remove all percussions from the music until you hard reset your console, but this after effect seems to be a hit and miss. So, I've gone through everything I can at its base. I've given the prototype a shot on multiple carts with many Mega Drives. I also gave the Model 2s a quick go because all of these contain the TMSS screen. While the header on the prototype is pretty plain, it still passes the security check with flying colours. And my good friend here has also provided proof that it will work just fine on a Wonder Mega, a CDX and on a Sega Nomad. Obviously, we have an unfinished product, so the game cannot be completed, but if you want to give this remarkable feature a go on an authentic system, then no matter what console or flash cart you have in your possession or plan to buy, you'll be just fine. Does the Sonic 1 prototype work on real hardware? Yes! But wait! Don't go anywhere just yet! I still want to try out the Sonic 1 prototype and Knuckles. So, let's get this out of the way. If you have any of the Mega Everdrives or the Mega SD, then let me shoot your hopes down right now. It will not work. It'll commence with Sonic & Knuckles as if nothing is attached. Although, if you have the Flash Kit Cart, or even an older Everdrive that uses a Flash ROM, then you're in luck. Let's start off with this, and warning, this is about to get technical. I flash the Proto onto the board, attach Sonic & Knuckles, and I get Sonic and Knuckles. What the? Well, this cart is 4 megabytes in size, and it turns out when flashing the 512 kilobyte sized ROM onto the cart, the rest of the 3.5 megabytes pads up with blank data by the program. When Sonic and Knuckles comes to compiling the flash, it grabs the last 2 megabytes off the code, and then it reads at address 100 off of that said 2 megabytes. Seeming as it's blank, it just plays the original game. So what I did do is open up Sonic 1 Proto in the hex editor, select all and copy, and then amended that data over and over several times. Now with the ROM being 2.5 megabytes in size, only 1.5 megabytes of data will be padded. Sonic and Knuckles grabs the last 2 megabytes as before, and finally sees something of value, with the serial number of the Proto being in the correct place. And voila! Now we have the Blue Spheres challenge. The problem here is that we had to hack the ROM to make this work, and in my world, that's, that's no good. good. But fortunately, it's a ton easier with the older Everdrives. To get this to work, select the normal Sonic 1 Proto as you usually would. Once it's all written, power off the console and attach the Everdrive to Sonic and & Knuckles. And bingo! No hacking is needed. This works because when it comes to flashing the game, it erases all 8 megabytes off the cart, but then only writes the ROM to the flash chip. It never pads it with blank data. So Sonic & Knuckles only sees 512 kilobytes of the data to extract, rather than 2 megabytes, and the rest works out the same. So back to business. Does it fire up the special stage? It sure does. And let me tell you now, this one is tough to finish. I've made a perfect run video on my secondary channel if you're interested, but otherwise, it works. And there we have it. Almost three decades later, we finally have a prototype of our dreams. But the search is not over. There are other builds out there somewhere, including what many have dubbed as the Holy Grail. 
and you can count your chickens when that becomes available to the public, I will be here to test that on real hardware as well.